kudos. Are we back? We are. Us? We're All right. So, now, we've we're been so sitting excited. here talking about his wonderful new movie. It's, it's days like this when we do love our job. Love. We get to hang out and drink wine with Academy Award and Golden Globe winner, Chin -chin. Russell, Russell Crowe. Cheers to you. Welcome, buddy. And a Backwards. terrific movie. All right. He's played some memorable Aussie. characters. Yeah. Oh, wait. I want a little oh. eye right here. We have a thing for Aussies. You do? Even though I, we know you came from New Zealand first. We'll forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's, he's had some memorable characters. You guys know everything from a big tobacco whistleblower in The Insider yep. to a mathematics genius and a beautiful mind and a revenge-seeking Roman general. My favorite! Gladiator. <laughs> yep, but his newest role is a first. Russell is not only starring in, and he's a difficult actor, we all know, but directing the <laughs> new movie, The Water Diviner, about an Australian farmer oh. who uses his talent oh. of finding water in the desert to search for his sons believed to have been killed in battle all the way over in Turkey. It's a beautiful it's a film. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. A lot of, lot of big sweeping things. A, a big movie to pick for your, your, you know, feature directorial debut. You've done a lot yeah, of other things. A lot of uh, complications involved in it, but I think that was why it was so compelling. Yeah. You know, because it was so all-encompassing and it was so big and, it, and on a little independent Australian film budget, it just seemed impossible. So that's probably why I wanted to do it. But wow. you know, just when you're looking at the script and you're seeing the scenes over in Turkey, the war, huge uh, storm scenes, sweeping Australian background mm -hmm. scenes, aren't you thinking as a, as a producer, director, ka-ching, ka-ching, yeah. ka-ching? It's going to cost a fortune. Yeah. Yeah, but that thing, when you're working in independent film, I remember I came out of independent film. You know, I started working in front of a camera when I was six. I didn't realize um, that. And I've been doing lead roles in feature films now for 25 years. Mm -hmm. So I came out of an independent film background. And the rule in independent film is you want to do something clever, but you need to do it for less money than the next guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So, um, you know, with CGI these days yeah. and a few other things, you can, you know, that's pretty expensive, actually. It's not exactly yeah. cheaper. You know, there are ways that you can, you know, create those those big moments. Without uh, actually building the sets yeah, without, and that sort without of Without physically yeah. creating it. One of the things it. you notice when you're watching this is how everyone's head seems to be so deep into the story and reading the backstory of how you got your actors prepared prepared for this in so Australia. You took them back in so many ways. Describe what you did to get you your actors in, prison, in the right you? headspace. <laughs> yeah. You basically put them in prison. That was fine. And, well, there was a bit of torture involved, <laughs> but nothing not? that you wouldn't be used to. <laughs> exactly. What did it? And then they want to do the role. It's going to be a big movie. They know. So did, did anybody complain? First of all, give us, give us an idea of what you did torturously yeah. to them. Um, well, a, a day during the boot camp would probably start with a long walk in the morning, followed by yoga, followed by a weight session, followed by horse riding, followed by weapon work, followed by a 50-kilometer bike ride. Oh, my God. Um, Any lunch um, involved here? Followed by some archery. Occasionally. <laughs> occasionally. Wine? We would Hello. eat. Oh, wow. Every now and, and then. And these guys are surfer the, dudes, right? No, no wine, though. Um, okay. I actually, I have a, a, a bar on the farm, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I told them that at the end of the 10 days, if they did well, I'd take them to the pub. Right? I am never I doing a movie that, with you. you know, that, that was the carrot at the end of the 10 days. <laughs> I'll go? take you to the pub. I'll take yeah. you to the pub. And so on the night, you know, they all get scrubbed up. They yeah, shave. They're, you know, they're feeling fantastic. <laughs> they have this week of exercise. You know, so I, I, I get them to meet me at this building that they've done all of their lectures in, you know, some of their physical mm -hmm. prep and all that. So they stand, they're all dressed up and they've shaved, they're oh, ready God. to go because they're going to go out and meet the young ladies who are around, whatever oh, no. it is, you know. <laughs> and so I take them on a walk back through the building that they've been through, but the opposite way to the normally arrive, okay. you know. Okay. And then by the time they get to the end of the building, there's a door there which they would have passed 50 times through the course of the week. Yeah. But now it's open. And there's a bar, and there's barmaids in there. The music's cranking, barmaids? and oh, they're they're like, "This has been here all week." <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> I hear from them. This is awesome. such an emotional movie. I mean, you need so the Kleenexes for this. Um, there, there are scenes with you and your sons, and this must have been, I mean, having children yourself, I can and see. And sons. Yeah, and that. sons. It must have changed just how you act in this movie, I would imagine. Well, not really, but it definitely connected me. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a, a, a cultural connection to parts of this story because I'm a New Zealand-born Australian. Yeah. And the Battle of Gallipoli is often seen as the moment where those young nations were forged. Yeah. They'd been to wars before, but as an extension of the British Empire. Mm -hmm. This is the first time Australia and New Zealand are fighting under their own flags. Mm -hmm. So it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a volunteer force. Mm -hmm. It's not like a regular army or conscription. You know, Brit the Britain called for volunteers to help 
defend itself and its friends in, in Europe and hundreds of thousands of young Australians put up their hands. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing. The fact that it's a story about a man with three sons who go to war and don't come back mm -hmm. and his grief as a father of two, as you said, mm -hmm. that's going to hit me at a very essential mm -hmm. level. But there was also another opportunity that I could see in the script to reshape the way people perceive this because we quite often in war films and also in our remembrance of the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. we, we take a side, we, don't we? We pick a side, man. Mm -hmm. And, we, and we, we actually, it's not that we color the other side necessarily, we just put them in such darkness. Right, we don't evil. know them, we, we yeah, dehumanize yeah. them, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know... This does the opposite of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I try to bring out the other side so you simply see that in any armed conflict, you're gonna have bravery, compassion, and grief on both sides. On both sides. Mm -hmm. Families mourn, no matter. If I just want to ask her yeah. one last question. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have trouble with your leading man? <laughs> we heard he's difficult. We he, heard look, that he is like know, impossible to deal with. The thing is, you know, that, that guy wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> Followed me everywhere. Slept with Into me. the men's That's room. That's something I have to say. You know, he first time you've slept with slept the leading with, man. He slept with the director on this movie. <laughs> It's a great film. It opens Thank this you, Friday. So we highly recommend it. Oh, You're I've a delight. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, he it's got he brought me bearing yeah, yeah, gifts. Yeah. Oh, there's another one of those. You're missing one. Did you nick it, mate? Is there another one? Come on, bring the other one. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank Dutch you. caught you, son. Oh, hey? oh busted. yeah, baby. What? So this Thank is this is a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. <gasps> I know that you have this marvelous well, Chardonnay. I'm going to send Beautiful. you home with one of our, my stuff. And Thank this, you. This is a cab from. I, I bought a uh, rugby league team, the team of my it childhood. It won this championship won. this year. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the hat you get. Like the moment you win, hey, like that's the Super Bowl champions. Can we, my husband's in the NFL Hall of Fame as one of the greatest right. football players. We went to Europe and I saw my first rugby game. So Hot. sexy! Hot. Oh <laughs> my gosh! Oh, no. None of that stuff that protects them. They're out there, all blood, guts, and sinew. I loved it. <laughs> oh, let me have a drink. Here you go. Yes, Here, Russell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yes. for coming to see all the water. Do you like my hat? It doesn't fit out of It's no big surprise. Right. From a beautiful man with a beautiful mind to the world's most beautiful woman and a game of who knew coming up after this. Nothing fits Hoda's Nothing. It's too big.